Hey guys, my name is Lop and I'll be talking to you in about the Great Barrier today. Now before we get too far away from the uh, jetty, I'd like to give you a few safety instructions uh, in case we hit an iceberg or something like that, okay? So guys, you'll notice there are no life jackets on board this vessel. This boat is one, meant to be one big life jacket for us all. Underneath the seats there is some flotation foam, so uh, technically this boat is unsinkable, okay? They said the same thing about the Titanic. So let's slide that in there, you know? So guys, now um, I've never crashed, so I don't plan on doing it today, so don't worry. Now guys, if you are feeling seasick today, there are two options. You can either go on the outside and feed the fish, or you have one bag in front of you there. He's raised to you, so all you need to do is open up, we head inside and read the instructions at the bottom. Very simple. Hey guys, if you are taking your rotary off to the reef today, I highly recommend that you turn your flash off, put your camera nice and close to the glass. This glass is about an inch thick, so probably to be taking photos uh, of your own face otherwise. This is the optimal way to take photographs of the coral and the fish. Hey guys, I can see there's a few people here who may not understand too much English. Uh, Minasan, konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Genki desu ka? Genki desu ka? Genki desu ka? Okay, watashi no namae wa nokon desu. Yoroshiku onegaishimasu. Uh, watashi no nihongo wa... Oh, ma, yeah? Ah, demo nihongo siri ga arimasu. Okay. So we'll start off with a bit of English, guys, then we'll finish off with a little bit of Japanese towards the end of the tour. So, welcome to the Great Barrier, ladies and gentlemen. Now the reef is not, as the name suggests, it's not one large reef. It's actually made up of around 2,900 different sections of reef. Now the Great Barrier starts right at the very tip top of Australia where it connects on to some other reefs going into Papua New Guinea. It goes all the way down the east coast to a place called Bundaberg, slightly north of Brisbane. Now to put that into perspective, it's roughly the same size as Japan. It is about half the size of Texas, Texas and the United States. It's larger than the UK and Italy as well. Now it's said that the uh, Great Barrier Reef is the only living organism that can be seen from the moon, okay? So the reef is living, okay? So the reef is made up of two different types of corals. We have the hard and the soft corals. It's very easy to tell two apart. The soft corals are moving with the motion of the ocean and the hard corals are there doing nothing, pretty much. So it makes up the living part of coral is a little thing called a coral polyp. Now guys, a coral polyp, if you can imagine a jellyfish upside down in a teacup, this is basically what a coral polyp looks like. Now they can vary in size from anything from your small fingernail to the end of a toothpick. Now living next to that coral polyp, there is a single celled algae known as a zooxanthellae. Zooxanthellae uses photosynthesis to produce amino acids and sugars, which these corals have taken feed of. So this is how to get about 90% of their nutrients. Now they get the other 10% by picking stuff up as it floats by in the water, okay? But most of the nutrients comes from harnessing the sun's energy. Hey guys, the first little formula we're going to come up to here, one of the first things you'll notice is that most of them are, uh, the corals are either brown or a beige sort of colour. This is actually the base colour for all corals. Anything other than that, such as your blues, greens, purples, pinks and yellows, is actually a different type of algae growing on top of that brown or beige sort of a colour. So look at these corals today, one of the first things to notice also is that there are no red corals around, okay? They are there, you just can't see them due to the lack of sunlight. So what happens is, there's plenty of sunlight above the water, as soon as it hits the water, then scatters into a million different directions, okay? This is what we call colour filtration. So you'll find about a metre of seawater that the colour red starts to disappear. The deeper you go, the less colours will be visible until you can't see it all due to the lack of sunlight. So first colours disappear are your reds, then your oranges, then your yellows, and so on and so forth. And the last colours to disappear are your blues and your purples. If the, this is why when you see a blue or purple coral today, it's the one that looks the most colourful and vibrant because it is the last colour to be filtered out of the light spectrum. So around here guys, there should be a beautiful purple boulder coral around. Nice, um, it's the one that looks like a boulder, believe it or not. 
Now, boulder corals are the slowest growing corals in the reef, growing about one to three centimeters per year. There it is, just coming out in the boat now. You see, it looks a little bit blue. Usually, uh, on a clear day, that would be more purple. So, guys, the uh, boulder corals, as I said, are the slowest growing corals in the reef, growing about one to three centimeters per year. So, on the inside of those boulder corals, they have age rings very similar to a tree. Uh, so scientists can look at these age rings now they tell just the age, they'll tell things like the water acidity, water temperature, and roughly how much rainfall there was, going back hundreds and in some cases thousands of years. Sea cucumbers are one of the first industry 